Uh, look, you threw his name out there, so I'll, I'll throw out there Mike McCarthy because I think it was going to be one of the ones we discussed today. It became a hot name the moment that Sean Payton announced that he was stepping away from a year from the Saints and he's been often linked with that job in Dallas. And, and OK, so two years under Mike McCarthy. First year, they get the DAC injury. They go, what, six and ten. And it's, yeah, it's not a great year, but there's things they can point the finger to. They have this bit of a resurgence in, in year two, 12 and five, go to the playoffs. But, yeah, they lose the 49ers team they probably should be on paper. And the fact is, is that regardless of what happened with that Prescott or not, and whether Sean Payton's out there or not, consistently when Mike McCarthy faces good teams or good coaches. He gets out coached and outplayed regardless of the talent on the field. I don't actually think he's very good at the job anymore, <laughs> but I think he's got a talented enough roster in an NFC East where he should realistically go and win that division without needing to be very good at his job. The, the thing that's really tough for Mike McCarthy is his kind of, the point of having Mike McCarthy is he's quite a good, and I know it doesn't always come across in press conferences or in the media. He's basically a philosopher of the game. He reads a ton, he studies more than anyone, and he is really, really good at knowing where the game is going, where the mini trends are, and where he can kind of squeeze out 3%, 5% advantage out of a roster. And he does that kind of at the, at, the, at the macro level. Then he hands that to the coaching staff and says, you figure out the game plan with this kind of long-term vision. So you see what Kellen Moore does with that offense. We saw what happened with Aaron Rodgers. He basically instituted the system that Matt LaFleur is still running with Rodgers. Now, Matt LaFleur is a genius because it's working with Rodgers, whereas McCarthy was an idiot in the final days of the Rodgers era. So that's kind of his role. Now, once you've done that, it's kind of over, right? And then as a head coach, he doesn't call plays on offense, doesn't call plays on defense, doesn't have any hand in the week-to-week -week game planning on offense and defense for the most part, maybe some ideas here or there. So he's reduced to being the timeout guy. And he might be the worst timeout guy in, yeah. <laughs> in recent football history. So it's, it is very much like, what is his job then on a day-to-day -day basis? He is no longer involved. The philosophy that they've built around Dak Prescott exists. They picked up Peyton Manning's offense from Denver, sprinkled on some Boise State goodness and said, here we go. Let's have a great offense, which works sometimes. And it's being poor in other stretches too. That that's job done. The thing that he has to worry about is not even the Sean Payton thing of, could Payton come down from the booth mid-season? Would he come you know, after a year sabbatical? Dan Quinn's right there. Absolutely. Dan Quinn is probably regretting that he turned down that Denver job because Russell Wilson skedaddled over there like a fortnight later and he probably wishes he took it. So Dan Quinn, I'm sure there was some assurance. Look, if this is going off the rails after five weeks, we'll get rid of Mike and you come in, you can at least have a run with, with that defense and being the, the head honch with the franchise for you know 10 weeks, 12 weeks into a playoff run. You're right, Will. They should comfortably win the NFC East, but for them, it's all just about playoff games. And I do really believe that by the time the playoffs roll around, Dan Quinn will be the head coach and not Mike McCarthy. There was this idea that, you know, uh, with Aaron Rodgers' future unsure, with Tom Brady gone from Tampa Bay, that earlier in the year that Dallas should be entering the fray as one of the favourites, put them alongside the Rams as the, as the reigning title holders. Now you kind of look at it and you think... You'd fancy any of the other division winners if the favourites go on to win it to beat them in in the divisional round, if not losing a wild card game again like they did last year. I don't know, I just nothing about it inspires me. But then Dan Quinn did a very good job with that defense last year, and particularly, you know, made himself look like an absolute genius with the way he used Micah Parsons. Is that enough for him to get another head coaching opportunity after it didn't happen in Atlanta, though? He he also has that kind of CEO persona. That was almost the the, the gold dust in, in Atlanta. He wasn't very hands-on with the defense in Atlanta once it was installed because they were running such a simplistic Seattle-style one there. He's become more hands-on with it in Dallas, and we saw what that was last year. It was a disaster the year before. It was excellent last season. The big problem they have is just defensive performance is not stable year to year. You go up, you go down. They do not have the playmakers they had last year. Now you go through the roster and all of a sudden you're like, ooh, that felt much deeper last year. Ooh, they looked a lot more athletic last year. Oh, I really like when Randy Gregory would play 25 snaps as the best sub rusher in the league. When the guy coming off the bench now is not Randy Gregory, that looks quite light. So uh, if, if I was them, you could not in any way. It would be, uh, it would be a minor miracle for Dan Quinn to get the exact same performance level out of that team or even you know, five, 10 percent here. I think that they should be planning on that being middle of the pack with some dynamic playmakers, Diggs, Parsons, Lawrence, who could maybe swing them a playoff game, but they cannot rely on that thing. What they need massively is serious improvement on the offensive side of the ball. That thing has to be more consistent, has to be more explosive, cannot just be about Kellen Moore coming up with cool 
payoff plays and, you know, cool trickery has to be a sustained machine that regularly posts 30 points a game just throughout the and just marches through good, good defenses. If, if they don't have that, given where they put their chips and the salary cap, then they're in trouble. I don't think this is a better team than it was last year either. That's the concern for me. You look at the roster, you look at what they did in the draft. I thought, hadn't, you know, the draft was fine. But, you know, you lose Namari Cooper, you lose a Randy Gregory. Uh, you know, so much was made about what Trayvon Diggs did. But let's be realistic and dig into something beyond the numbers. You know, Trayvon Diggs was at times a liability, especially down the field. You know, he gave up a number of big plays down the field, which you're not seeing guys like Jair Alexander or Jalen Ramsey or Xavier Howard give up. Uh, with the regularity that digs it. Yes, he got a lot of turnovers, but um, there's a lot more to it than, than that. What I found really interesting about McCarthy is remember when he was out of football and he hired the guy or he was talking about, he, he was working with the guy from, what's the game show? The um, Is it Jeopardy? It might have been Jeopardy, but one of the game shows. And Peter King went and did the, the sit down interview with him. And he was literally talking about how all of a sudden he got so into analytics that when he got a coaching job, he was going to hire the guy who'd won Jeopardy like on six times, six occasions. <laughs> that would be his like. And I was thinking, what on earth is this? You know, I know the analytics, uh, this is just straight bonkers. And I don't think he's got, I don't think he's got any better as a head coach. And also, I don't think that, you know, cruising through the NFC East last year to a 12 and 5 record is absolutely fine. But that's as that that's a base minimum, I think, for me. If you're head coach yeah. of the Dallas Cowboys at the moment in that division, you know it it, it can't be just winning the, the the division should not be seen as a hallelujah moment. It has to be getting deep into the playoffs. It has to be NFC Championship games. It has to be Super Bowls. And I just don't a don't think that he's good enough. B I don't think this roster is good enough. And C I I don't think that Jerry Jones will hang around too long. And whether that is Dan Quinn, whether that is Kellen Moore. Or more obviously, Sean Payton, which I think is probably the the answer. I think you know this time next year we'll be sitting here talking about how Sean Payton is the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys.